Digital, David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be unboxing and reviewing the Acer 22 inch full HD monitor, model number SB220Q. I did purchase this product myself and any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this monitor or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in my video description below. I bought this monitor because it is one of the top selling monitors on my channel. It's in the top three most popular and purchased monitors. So I wanted to check it out for myself and see what the hype is all about and why you guys continue to buy this monitor up like crazy. So first things first, you can see the retail box in packaging right here. We can rotate it around so you can see it from all different sides and angles. We learned a lot about this product straight from the product packaging, 22 inches, 21.5 inches, technically measured diagonally, full HD, so it's 1920 by 1080p, AMD FreeSync, ultra thin, IPS panel, so we get the nice viewing angles and colors right there with it. We also have more tech specs on the side. It's 250 nits for its brightness, four millisecond response time, and supposedly up to 75 hertz using HDMI. So now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the package contents. Here are all the package contents. First up, you can see our warranty information followed by our quick start guide right here, walking us through a lot of the product accessories, regulation and safety notices. It's also available in multiple languages. You can see charts and diagrams walking us through how to set everything up with the controls for the buttons. Then you can see we have all of our cables right here, our power cable and power supply, followed by an included VGA legacy cable right here. Then we have our stand. You can see the base and we have it in two parts. And then last but not least, we have the monitor itself right here. You can see the Acer logo and branding on the back side in the corner. That looks really sharp. Love the black and gray font right there. We have more product information down here like our model number, the SB220Q. You can then see our ports as well. We have our HDMI port and our VGA port and our power port. We also have our Kensington lock down there on the backside. Super thin, it gets thicker at the bottom though. You can see that. Let's go ahead, let's flip it up. Now you guys can see the different buttons on the bottom. So we have six menu buttons right there. There's where our stand's gonna mount and slide right in. Let's look at it from the side. You can see that slim side profile right here and then boop bulges out a little bit, but look at how thin that is. Let's look at that from the top too. So you guys can see that right there. Super thin, looks great. Now let's look at the screen itself. Check that out. Acer logo and branding right here. Really thin and slim bezel along the sides in the top of the screen. So that looks great too. Love the finish right there. Super thin. So it looks really nice. Check that out, there it is. There's from the side profile again. Now let's go ahead, let's work on getting the stand installed. So here are your two pieces for stand installation. We're gonna take this first piece, line it up with the base, and we're gonna drop it right in just like you see right here. There's a threaded connector on this side and on the back of this one that's gonna tighten down and we can just do it finger tight. So this only goes one way, so go ahead, line it up, push it in just like you see here, flip it over. Now we can tighten down with our fingers right there, nice and snug, there we go. So now you can see they're not gonna separate. Now we're ready for the next step, which is to attach this to the monitor itself. So you can see this plate right here is gonna go right into the back of the monitor. So it's gonna just slide right in there. You're gonna line that up with it. So let's go ahead, let's gently push it in place, just like this, and there we go, that's it guys. Now you can see we have it all attached together and we can see what we can do with this included stand. So there we go, you can see that's tilted all the way down. Now we can tilt it all the way back. So there it is, that's our max tilt. And there it is, tilted all the way down. No rotation to the left or to the right, so you're gonna have to physically just move the monitor. And there's no Vista mount on the back either if you're hoping to upgrade stands in the future. So keep that in mind. You're pretty limited to just the stand for this monitor. But you can see that right there. We got it installed and we do get some tilt functionality, but it's very, very basic in the realm of computer monitor stands. Now let's go ahead, let's power it on and look at the menu settings. So you can see we got the monitor plugged in and powered on. We're using the HDMI connection with our Windows 10 machine. 
Let's push the first button at the bottom to bring up our menu setting. You can see the five different options right there for the menu. Let's push the first one again. Now we can cycle between different picture settings. So we can choose the different modes right here for the picture, whatever we're after. Now let's go ahead, let's leave it at the standard option for now. So now let's go back, let's go to our second icon. It's the brightness icon right here. Currently we're set to 75, which works for us. It's a good option right there. Now let's go ahead, let's go to the third option. You can see it's our contrast settings. We're gonna leave that at 50, but we can adjust that if we desire. All right, let's go back. Now our fourth option right here. So let's go ahead, let's select that. You can see we can adjust our input settings very quickly if we want. So let's go back out. And then we have our fifth option. So let's go ahead, let's select that one right here. And that's gonna bring up all of our settings. We have our picture settings right here. So if we want, we can adjust those. So you can see the different options that we have right there for our picture settings. Then we can go back and let's go down to our next option right here. It's our color settings. Then you can see we have our gaming settings, our on-screen display settings, our system settings, and information about this monitor. You can see 1080p, 60 hertz. We're not getting 75 hertz that some people mention that they get. So that might just be hit or miss depending on the monitor that you get. A couple reviews said that a guy bought two of the same monitors at different times. One worked for 75 Hertz, the other was just 60. So I would just assume at this point, it's a 60 Hertz monitor and be pleasantly surprised if you get a 75 Hertz version of this monitor. Now let's go ahead, let's test out the viewing angles. So here we go guys, you can see I got a video on the screen. Let's go ahead, let's rotate it so you guys can see the viewing angle right here. With the IPS panel, they're known for really nice viewing angles and also for very accurate and vivid colors. So here we go, you can see what it looks like with the viewing angle. Let's go ahead, let's do that again with the lights off. Now the lights are off and we're gonna rotate it again so you guys can get a different look and feel for it here in the studio. So you can just see the viewing angle with this IPS panel. It's really, really nice for viewing, especially if you're working from home or using this in an office and you got a coworker looking over your shoulder or somebody side by side with you. If you wanna discuss something on the computer, you'll both be able to see it with that really nice viewing angle, thanks to the IPS panel technology. Now with the same video playing, I thought we'd go ahead and we rotate through those picture settings again so you guys can see it in action for a couple of different of those preset modes. So let's go to the next option right here. You can see that one on the screen. We'll give it a couple of seconds. Now let's jump to the next mode couple of seconds right here. And now let's go to the next mode. Give it a couple of seconds. Let's go up, let's try that mode. Now we can go over to the next one. Next one. And our last mode right there for our different picture settings. Now let's go ahead, let's try out the refresh rate. So here's one of my favorite tests, guys. It's the Blur Busters motion test. You can see it right here on the screen. The difference between 15, 30, and 60 FPS with our 60 Hertz display right here. The higher, the better. 60 is your bare bones minimum today on the market, so keep that in mind. It'd be better to have 75 Hertz, 120, 144, 240, something like that, especially if you're gaming. For a general utility monitor, a work from home monitor, like this monitor is, 60 Hertz is gonna be fine. You'll be able to game just fine with this monitor. You won't have any issues. But again, if you're playing a lot of first person shooters or you're a hardcore gamer, you should definitely be looking at like 144 Hertz refresh rates to get that really smooth footage when you're doing those first person shooters. But you can see the difference right here as we double our frame rate each time and how smooth the 60 FPS with the 60 Hertz is compared to our 30 or our 15. So you can see I'm browsing the web right now. We have the Verge pulled up right here just so you guys can get a feel for what it's like to browse the web with this monitor. And again, you have 22 inches of screen real estate to use. In regards to fonts and text, you can see we have a lot going on right here and everything is very clear and crisp. Nothing's fuzzy or hazy like that. So you can see in real time what it looks like as we check on the latest and greatest tech news, everything that's going on today. So you can see super responsive, very enjoyable experience browsing the web to consume our favorite content with this monitor.
So what's a monitor review without trying out a little bit of gaming too? You can see we got Fortnite pulled up right here. We got the high settings, 1920, 1080p, 60 FPS. Everything's really smooth, looks great. Let's go ahead, let's jump out of the battle bus. You guys can see it in action right here. Looks really nice. Very smooth footage and gameplay. gameplay very happy with the 1080p 60 hertz refresh rate that we get for some casual gaming like you saw right here as we played some fortnite so let me share with you guys my final thoughts after using this monitor. First, I wanna say I definitely see why this is a very popular monitor on the market today. It's affordable and it offers a lot of great features at this competitive price point. So with that being said, you get the full HD, you get 60 Hertz refresh rate. And this really is a simple work from home monitor or office monitor if you're looking to give yourself some extra screen real estate. Maybe you're at home and you're working on a laptop and you want that extra space. You're gonna consider a monitor like this. 22 inches is a great size. I don't recommend going any less. And then anything above like 27 inches, I would say is kind of outside that sweet spot. So I prefer 22 to 27 inches. You can go up to 32 if you want, but after that it just gets pretty big. You gotta be a lot further away from it, which could work in some cases. But for this size, very happy with it. And the design looks great too. Love the really slim bezels along the sides and the top, but I do think they missed something right here. They should expand the screen all the way out because you can see on the screen itself, we have a black border about half an inch all around so it kind of defeats the purpose of this really slim design and how good it looks i really wish they just made the screen go to the edge of the display that would be really nice to see in the future but with this ips panel we get great color accuracy and great viewing angles and again full hd is fine for anything you'll be doing with your work especially at this size of a monitor you don't have to have 1k 2k 4K or anything like that. You can even do casual gaming on this. As you guys could see, the footage was fine. I definitely wouldn't recommend this as a gaming monitor straight up, but if you just wanna casually game and have something that you can use majority of the time for your work or web browsing, then you're gonna to wanna to consider this monitor. Honestly though, guys, if you did wanna buy this for a budget-friendly gaming monitor, I think you would be happy but again, if you have a really top dog, high end, spec'd out PC for gaming, you're not gonna get the most out of that computer with this monitor. But if you just like the game in 1080p full HD and 60 Hertz refresh rate at some of the highest settings on the games on the market today, then yeah, this could work for you. But again, this isn't made for that. This is really made to be just your utility workhorse monitor, but you can game on it just fine as you could see in this video. Now, with that being said, here's a couple things I wanna see improved upon in the future. The first one is they gotta give us Visa mount on this. I feel like they really um, are hurting themselves by not having a Visa mount option on this. The stand is fine, obviously it works great, but if you wanna add a monitor arm, monitor mount or anything like that, you're not gonna be able to do it with this monitor, so you're stuck using this stand. Also, there's no built-in speakers. Now, most of the time, if you've watched monitor reviews or seen monitor reviews, most people don't like the speakers anyway, so I understand why they're left off most of the time, but I'd rather have the speakers, not need them, than need the speakers and not have them. So I'd like to see like some one watt or two watt speakers included with this monitor built right in. That would be really nice, especially since it's still pretty thick at the bottom. There is room to put some speakers in here, even if they're low quality. So I'd love to have some built-in speakers with this monitor last thing is the stand as we kind of mentioned earlier there's no visa mount but with the stand itself it's just not super practical we just get that little bit of tilt so you can see we can just tilt it back 
and that's it. We don't even get to rotate it left or right. Now, I know it's small and we can just physically move it left or right, but it'd be nice to be able to have the option to have some height adjustable monitor base along with some better tilt, some better pivoting, and maybe even a rotation so we could use this in um, our portrait mode as well instead of just the landscape mode. But overall, guys, a solid choice. Very pleased with this monitor at its price point for the features that we get. And again, like I said earlier, I definitely see why a lot of you guys are buying this monitor. Well, that concludes our video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget the product link will be in our video description below. Please go ahead, check it out and do your shopping from there. Any purchase made through that link helps support our channel at no additional cost to you. So we're really grateful and thankful for all of your support. While you're at it, can you go ahead and hit that like button for us? And subscribe to our channel. We have new content coming out daily and we don't want you to miss anything. Please go ahead and give us a follow online and make it a clean sweep. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, Discord. You can message us on WeChat. Check out our website and join our free newsletter. Thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget new content daily and we can't wait to see you in our next video.